The Biden-Harris administration often cited robust job growth as proof the U.S. economy was in great shape as they touted Bidenomics. And now we know U.S. employers added far fewer jobs than the White House initially reported. In fact, the U.S. Labor Department's revised figures show at least 818,000 jobs were added that never even existed. Former President Donald Trump wrote on Truth Social, Massive scandal. The Harris-Biden administration has been caught fraudulently manipulating job statistics to hide the true extent of the economic ruin they have inflicted upon America. If Kamala gets another four years, millions more jobs will vanish overnight and inflation will completely destroy our country. Your life savings will be wiped out. Joining us now to discuss this is Job Creators Network Chief Communications Officer Elaine Parker. Good morning to you. Welcome. Good morning, Jan. Thanks so much for having me. So the U.S. Labor Department often has revisions to these numbers because the monthly estimates are based on surveys. The more accurate numbers, as we know, are from actual state employment records. Thus, we have downward revisions typically. However, the downward revision for March year to year is about 30 percent, which is very, very significant. What did you make of this when it first came out? You know, it is a massive revision, it, but it confirms what we've been saying for a long time, and that's that the labor market is far weaker than the top line data suggests. You know, it, it also nullifies all of these exaggerated headlines that we've seen that allow the Harris-Biden administration to really paint a false picture of the strength of the economy. And it's evidence why the American people and small business really can't afford another four years of the types of policies that Kamala Harris supports and the job when you actually look at the jobs that have been created in the last year under the biden harris administration 60 percent of them have come in government and quasi-government like healthcare and social service sectors of the economy and the problem with those kinds of jobs is that they're government created jobs that don't lead to a strong labor market. If we want to get back to prosperity, a strong uh, economy, a strong labor market, we have to cut the reckless spending, get inflation under control, and increase our domestic energy production. And Vice President Kamala Harris getting blasted for some of those economic proposals, trying to do just that, including raising corporate taxes and forcing government price controls. Economists say what we have at the grocery store is not price gouging. It is inflationary pricing as the cost of everything is going up for everybody. Uh, also, there are already state and local laws against price gouging so that in emergencies like natural disasters, you don't see a bottle of water costing you 10 bucks. So what would her plan mean for business owners and for the American economy? Well, look, what uh, Kamala Harris is proposing is a series of very bad policy solutions to problems that her policies really created. There is no evidence of price gouging at all. This is just gaslighting the American people and, and actually refusing to take responsibility for the policies that have led to this cost of living crisis. When you look at the wholesale cost of doing business to uh, businesses, um, their inflation versus the consumer price inflation, they have risen at exactly the same rate in tandem together. And so the reality is, is that if the price of lemons goes up, then the price of lemonade to consumers is gonna go up. There's no other business model that works. Taxes will be a key issue for the next president, no matter who it is. More than 60% of taxpayers could see higher taxes in 2026. If the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act is not extended, we know it's going to expire in 2025. It's going to expire next year. Now, Harris wants to deal with the deficit by raising the corporate tax rate from 21 to 28%. What does that mean for the average middle class working American? Well, it would be devastating for everyday ordinary Americans. It would also be devastating for our small businesses, which were really the biggest recipients of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. They would uh, see their 20% tax deduction and their immediate expensing provision of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act go away. And what we saw under the Trump administration when the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act was passed was one of the strongest economies we'd seen in half a century. We saw low un unemployment in every single demographic across the board. We saw wages rising, low inflation, low interest rates, and an economy and a labor market that was very strong because job, real jobs were being created. And, and so the, uh, Kamala Harris has promised to allow the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act to, to expire, and that would be devastating for our small businesses. Job Creators Network Chief Communications Officer Elaine Parker, always a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks for joining us this morning here on the National Desk. Thank you so much.